Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel and the third and final video in the Elastic series. My name is Katie Fredrickson and in today's video, we're gonna be going over some troubleshooting for Elastic. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you watch the first two videos in this series. Those videos go through a bunch of common questions. So if you're not finding the answers you need here, they're likely answered in one of those two videos. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna list out some common problems and we're gonna go through how to troubleshoot them. First is curled or bunched elastic application. This is a problem that's caused by uneven tension when sewing, either too much or too little tension, and either on the elastic or on the fabric. In my experience, curled or bunched elastic application means that the elastic is being pulled too much. So my first solution to correct this would be stop pulling the elastic. And you might be saying, I'm not pulling the elastic, but keep listening. If you're using an elastic foot, you're going to want to loosen the tension dial. And if you're not using an elastic foot, I recommend that you let the elastic run through your fingers instead of pinching it. Also, keep a pile of elastic in your lap or next to the machine and make sure that it's untangled. If you have your elastic on the floor or if there's tangles or anything, this can cause unnecessary weight on the elastic which will ultimately have a pulling effect. But it might just be your machine or your foot that's causing the tension. You could be doing everything perfectly right. So the second solution to correcting this is to gently pull the fabric out from the back of the machine. This will correct for the uneven tension and give you a flat elastic application. Next is stretched or wavy elastic application. So this is the exact same problem with the exact same root as the other issue and it's uneven tension but in this case, it's the fabric that's being pulled too much. And if you're guiding your fabric from the back of the machine, like I suggested in the previous step, you could run into this problem if you end up pulling too much. So if that's the root of the problem, then just ease up on how much you're pulling. But if that's not the issue and it just seems like it's a machine thing, then the way to correct this is to slightly pull on the elastic while sewing. And with both of these, it's hard to say how much or how little you'll need to adjust. So it really takes practice. And with elastic in general, it really does take practice, but you will get there and it is so worth it. You're not gonna get it right the first time. You're probably not gonna get it right on the 10th time, but by the 30th time, you're getting better. By the 50th time, you're kind of getting the hang of it. And by the time you've made 100 swimsuits, you could do it with your eyes closed. But obviously, if you're watching this series, it's probably not what you want to hear. So let's get back to the practical advice. Another common issue is the machine will swallow the elastic while you're trying to sew over it. From what I've seen, this typically happens on regular sewing machines and not on sergers. But either way, the advice would be pretty much the same. And from my experience, this problem would happen when I was first starting a seam. So if that's what's happening, then I recommend you start sewing from the middle of the seam and then sew out towards each edge. Sometimes at the very beginning of a seam, the needle can actually push the fabric and the elastic below the needle plate, and that's how you end up with a clog. So if you start from the middle where the edge can't be pushed under, then that is a good tip to correct it. And the same thing that goes for elastic also goes for any sort of top stitching you're doing. If you're having that problem, you could try starting from the middle instead. Another option is to add more seam allowance, again, so that your machine isn't so close to the edge, which will run the risk of getting a clog. I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again, make sure you're using high quality thread as well as ballpoint or stretch needles. Also make sure that you're regularly changing your needles out. As many of you know, that can be the root of a lot of issues and those issues can be solved pretty quickly by changing your needles or switching up your thread. So this question is very common. What tension should you use? And this is gonna be one of those answers where you're gonna say, Katie, this is useless. <laughs> Every machine is different. Everyone's settings are different. Every fabric is different. The way that every machine treats each fabric is different. The way that each machine treats the elastic is different. You get the point. Because there are so many differences, it's hard to say exactly what your tension should be. However, there are a lot of very helpful resources out there in order to look at the problems that you're having and diagnose them. So if you search for serger tension chart on Google, you'll be able to find a few blog posts and stuff that have images where you can see 
what is the problem and what you need to change. They're very helpful. So if you're having tension issues, I'd say go to one of those posts first. If you weren't able to solve your problems from the previous tips, then checking your tension and just playing around with it could be a good next step. So that completely wraps up this series on elastic. If your question wasn't answered in any of the three videos, then comment it below. Then that way others can see it and we can just have all this information in one place. If you're not already, go follow at Edgewater Ave on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and be sure to join our Facebook group where we now have over 4,000 sewers just like you. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again soon.